Vi ringrazio profondamente per essere qui. Thanks. I would like to thank you very much indeed to be uh, for being here today. So as to uh, um, give some continuity to a project which started a few years ago and which led to the participation of quite a substantial proportion of European civil society. This is a very ambitious project to bring about reforms in an area where there are many shortcomings, uh, an area based on a scientific model which is simply wrong and obsolete. This is an idea which uh, is supported by 1,170,326 signatures which were collected all around Europe. This shows that there's a great civic uh, support so this great unity in terms of civil society must be borne out by our politicians, and we will continue to work tirelessly in the years to come. We need your contribution to change the mentality of this parliament. Thank you. Now, animals don't have their own advocates, their own lawyers in society, nor indeed in politics. That's why it's so important that those human beings who have understood that animals do have basic rights, that these human beings work together in order to implement these rights step by step. We're referring to Directive 2010 of 63 of the European Union, and it is a signal. It's a directive according to which you can still inflict absolutely awful suffering on animals, that you can inflict this upon these sentient buildings. In fact, I would uh, refer you to Article 55 of the directive where you talk about uh, apes who also may be used for testing purposes. It's true that at one stage experiments were conducted on animals for toxicology, for cosmetics, for pharmaceutical products, but at the moment what we're uh, saying is that all of this is out of date. This is no longer in keeping with an effective uh, analysis of the data which we had available on man. I'm here to support this initiative. This is an initiative which has obtained a, an incredible number of signatures, over a million. I've been working on Horizon 2020, and not enough is done to come up with an alternative to experiments on animals. And there are experiments out there. There are cell cultures, for instance, whether they be strain cells or not. And there's plenty of information, uh, aggregate data, which is available, which enables us to uh, assess the consequences. And we've been able to prove all of this. Also long ago, and in fact under some circumstances still to this very day, animals are used as biological models for humans, but that is nonsensical in actual fact. No species can be a, a model for the human species. Look at the definition of a species, for instance a reproductive one, and it will show quite clearly that the genes of a species are unique to that species, and our species has its own gene set and therefore you can't have a valid model from another animal for us. We've uh, carried out an analysis, a rigorous analysis of the situation because we're still seeing a deterioration in terms of prevention and in fact a total absence of, uh, of sound systems for the toxicity of our environment and we've come to the conclusion that all of this is due to the fact that research on prevention, in other words assessment of toxical risk, uh, scientific progress in the areas of Alzheimer's, diabetes, Parkinson's and cancer, uh, there's been hardly any progress whatsoever. Why? Well because all of this research is carried out on animal models. The animal is taken as though it were a biological model for human beings, which is absolutely not justifiable. The 1.2 million people who have signed the petition are now informed citizens because they now know that animal experimentation is not only cruel, it also represents bad science. And that is the key message of Stop Vivisection. You and I, ladies and gentlemen, have around 300 industrial chemicals in our bodies that shouldn't be there. Some of those chemicals are known to cause cancer in people. The reason they got there is that they all, were all tested on animals and they passed animal safety testing. So we are now stuck with 300 industrial chemicals in our bodies. Now it's very easy to analyze 
those chemicals using just a small sample of our blood, sweat, and tears. But if we don't stop using animals, we are going to have to give up a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in the future, based on what Dr. Claude Rice has told you. Ecco, noi purtroppo abbiamo moltissime direttive. We have many legal provisions which lay down the obligation or the possibility uh, of using animals. And we're asking the European institutions, thanks to this initiative, and we'll also be organizing a hearing in the next few months, a public hearing at the European Parliament, we'll be asking the Commission to go to move on and to leave animal experimentation to one side uh, because it's a practice which really belongs to the previous century. We need adequate scientific methods which are in keeping with these needs and the health of the citizens as well as the environment. And I say the environment because uh, reach also uh, refers to the use of animals, although it doesn't exclude other possibilities just for carcinogenicity tests for 100,000 substances or for the 10,000 listed in REACH, you would need centuries of research because one single carcinogenicity test requires hundreds of rats to be studied over a certain number of years. So you can realize uh, that it is impossible to know how things are, are evolving. Citizens need to use uh, uh, tests which are already available in the United States for toxicological purposes, and uh, we're asking journalists to disseminate information on this so that we come up with a solution which will be valid for everybody.